Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Grade a Corset Legacy of Destruction Release date April 25th, 2024 Introduces Ragnarika, Tempai Dragon, and Shining Sarcophagus We also see a further support for the TCG archetype. Potential Tempai Dragon 90% Yes, with a potential of 90%, Tempai Dragon is looking to be an archetype that's gonna take our competitive scene by storm. Facts. We have potential of Ragnarika at 5%. Now, indeed. Ragnarika's uh, percentage levels are really quite low, with other archetypes in the meta like Pearly, Labyrinth, Unchained, and other more stronger, better archetypes. Ragnarika as a deck, we're not seeing it doing anywhere. Even as an engine, likely it's not going to do anything either did it do anything in ocg no will it do anything in tcg i do not think so my poor heart i can't take it there's loads of things in this archetype that just don't make it a good archetype for it to last in the tcg i can't deny that it's just the truth at this point it's not that the archetype is bad did you know a lock on type actually matters it's just that it doesn't do enough because you are trash! And finally, we have potential of Shining Sarcophagus. Our first ever potential of 0%. You don't get to play, you just lose. In the... With this archetype, it's just going to do absolutely nothing. Right? Nothing in TCG. This is a fun archetype, which is to be played in casual or fun games. Tournament-wise, you are not seeing this archetype in any competitive scene anywhere. You, we did not see this in OCG, and we will never see it in TCG. That's all I've got to say about this. Support update. Ancient Gear, Goblin Biker, Gold Pride, Snake Eye, Diabell Star, Sinful Spoils, Memento, Melodious, Light Sworn, Voiceless Voice, Valmonica, Centurion, Jubel, White Series, Ashen. Wildcard, Metal Tronus. Indeed, the Wildcard, Metal Tronus, is, is a really interesting card with a very interesting effect, and is quite cheap to get, and definitely I recommend getting this Wildcard. It's quite useful and could help you in a pinch. And I feel it's very rare to have a wild card in a set that is readily available for players to access. So, it is quite handy to have or to get Metal Tronus. In fact, I'll be getting one quite soon. Okay, and we have our value card, Snake Eyes Diabell Star. Um, indeed. Yeah, with Snake Eyes being one of the best decks in our current competitive scene right now, then any kind of support for it is going to have a lot of value. In fact, it's going to soak up the value and be one of the most expensive cards in the set. So we'll have, and that will be Snake Eyes Diabell Star. Indeed, that is the case. We have our high potential card, Way, Way, There's a Will. And that's pretty much it. Now, this is a new section for this uh, Greater Corset video. And so why does it have high potential? Because this card does a lot as a field spell. It's part of prosperity as a field spell. There's a lot of potential here as we can use this in various decks. It can be used in conjunction with chicken game but there's just so much potential here that we really cannot ignore its effects, its utility, and what it does. So bear that in mind when we talk about this field spell, where there's a will. 
Yu-Gi-Oh! Award candidates. We have the best new archetype of 2024. So far is looking to be Tempai Dragons. Indeed, as a candidate for getting this best award, I definitely think it earns it. Tempai Dragon is looking to be the best new introduction of an archetype in 2024. There's loads of things going for this, and it's cheap, readily available, really strong. It gets further strengthening of support in Infinite Forbidden, the next set after this one. That's all I've really got to say about this, really. And we got the best support update is Ubel. 2024, Ubel. Indeed, when it comes to the best support, I think we can say of the year, I think Ubel takes this easy. Easy slam dunk, easy win. Unless we're gonna see some other support. But so far, what Ubel has gotten in this set has been absolutely amazing. The deck has changed. Has gone from a tier 3 from a tier 500 deck to a tier 2 a tier 2 deck possibly to even tier 1 the potential for you bell is insane we have a rank 10 that came out in this set that means that you bell now has a generic omni negate there's just so much going for you bell right now we definitely definitely uh need to take that into consideration Right, that's all I've got to say about this. And we have the best high potential card of 2024, Way Where There's a Will. Definitely, I think this is the most highest potential of a card I think we're going to see in a card so far. It's definitely got there and it's, as a high potential candidate, I think it's a surefire winner. Maybe in future sets we're going to see a card come out and we're going to talk about it that has higher potential than this. But I think so far this is a candidate and has a strong chance of winning this award. I think that's it. Let's let's move on. Okay, so let's grade this set. And through uh, looking at this set and what this set offers and everything, the final grade is B. Is for bravery. That's right. I agree this set a B. There's quite a few things in this set, and maybe you might think that this set should have a higher grade, it should be an A, but I do not feel so. Apart from Tempai Dragons, there's nothing really in this set that a lot of people that we are looking for out is a community. Um they're very we only have one archetype that we're looking out for. Ragnarika is pretty garbage. I don't think anyone is looking out for that. I don't think... And Shining Sarcophagus, no one is looking out for that. While Ashend is interesting, I guess. But the thing is, with the TCG exclusive archetypes, they've been trash from the get-go. So not many players are looking out for that competitive-wise. So competitively speaking, the car the cards in the set, um, there's not a lot of them that are useful. Now, that doesn't mean that the, uh, that the set is bad, because Tempai is cheap and you can get this for the cheap. But this is also going to mean that even though Tempai is easy to cheap to get, easy to play and hard to master, Tempai is going to be very interesting in how it's going to affect our competitive scene. All in all, when we calculate everything together, when we look at this set as a whole, look at the cards involved, there's only one set, that's uh, one archetype, that really is sought after here. Everything else is sort of hot garbage, sadly. The wild card, while great, is not enough to grade this set higher to bump it up to an A status. It's just not enough, guys. It's just not enough. And with all the things I've talked about, with everything coming as ahead, we will definitely maintain this grade of B. We come to the end of this video. So, as I like to say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate, right, is in your hands.